So I wanted to focus on the topic of why do we hold on to things, okay? And I'm going to say that this is not, and I said this to Derek earlier today, it's not a presentation, it's a conversation. So I will be presenting these topics to you, but we're going to, I want your feedback. We're going to talk about each one of the topics as we go along, okay? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, good. Okay. All right. So I've broken it down to seven different topics of why we hold on to things, okay? So the first topic that I had is what if I get rid of it and I need it later? Is, is that a... Can you say that again? What if I get rid of it and I leave and I need it later? Mm -hmm. So that's a big topic. The what if topic, the what if conversation is very big because we hold on to a lot of different things. Thinking what if? What if I have this big event to go to? What if I have a party that has eight people and I only have six chairs? So let me hold on to 10 chairs because I need enough chairs for these people. What if a rainstorm comes and I don't have 25 umbrellas because I need them all to protect me from the rain? We hold on to what if a lot and that causes, can cause us to have a lot of clutter. So what I will want you to do is think about this. If you haven't seen or used an item within a year, most likely you're not going to use it. And holding on to it in case of the what if, I really want you to think about that item. And what I would like you to do is look at an item, think about how you would use it, what event you would use it in, and then say to yourself, is it realistic that that event or situation would actually happen? And also, if that event or situation happened, is it realistic that you'll use that item? Or would you probably go out and buy something else? So let's say we're holding on to this dress that we could wear. I'll say it like a wedding that I was supposed to go to this weekend. I'm holding on to this dress and I could wear this at this wedding. I've had this dress for a couple of years and it could still, I could still wear it. But when it comes down to it, when it's time for that wedding, am I really going to wear that dress? Or am I going to go out and buy something else? Another what if items that we hold on to is, what if I lose some weight? Let me hold on to these size four pants. Knowing I'm a size 16, I'll probably never get down to a four again. But let me hold on to them just so I will have them if I lose weight. Now, let's say it takes me two years to get down to a four, uh, back down to a four. Let's say I do get down to a four. Am I really going to go back and buy those pants, wear those pants, which is probably out of style after two years right. anyway, because they're probably not classic pants for me to be keeping them. They could be some snake skin pants that look really good on me <laughs> when I was that size. But if I were to get back to that self, am I really going to wear those pants? So that's another thing that we hold on to. What if? That's a big what if that especially women, I know men may hold on to it too, but especially women hold on to what if I become large or even the other way. What if I lost weight and I had all of these larger clothes? What if I hold on to them in case I gain my weight back? First of all, that's putting a lot of negative connotations in your mind because you're thinking that you're not going to be successful at your goal. But secondly, if you were to gain the weight back, would you really be wearing those same clothes? So that's my first topic. What if I get rid of it and I need it later? What do you guys think about that? You just gave me a lot to think about because I've been trying, you know, trying to get rid of these clothes and I got this, this box of dresses for like, oh, if I go out, but I be in the house, so I need to just go ahead and stop playing because I be what if in myself to death. So I'm going to go ahead and just, but they just be so cute. That's my problem. My problem is with clothes and shoes. And I just be like, oh, this is so cute. Like when I threw away those other clothes, I just convinced myself that was a phase of fashion that I'm no longer in. But what about the rest of my, I'm, I gotta find a healthy balance.
definitely having what I need because I can't be like you, Tiff, with one pair of shoes and one pair of flats and two pairs of pants. I can't do that. But I'm going to challenge myself to negate this whole what-if situation because more than likely, I'm not going to do the what-if that I'm thinking, especially if it involves going out. And what I want to say about that also, you mentioned that you are not like me. The goal isn't to be like me. Both of you know I'm an all or nothing type of person. So when I say I'm going to become a minimalist, it's I'm going to become a minimalist. And this conversation isn't about becoming a minimalist because minimalism isn't for everybody. It's about living your best life without having all of the clutter or attachment to things. That doesn't mean you have to be like me with one pair of black shoes, flats, one pair of black heels, one pair of black, black boots. But it's about holding on, not holding on to those things that you're not using because all it's doing is causing, causing clutter. And Kay, I know we talk about the fact that you'll be moving soon. Now is the perfect time for you to start looking at those things that you're not using so that you don't take all of that clutter and mess into your new space. So just think about that. And like Kayla, I told you one thing to do before, pack that stuff up, put it away for three months. If you don't feel that you can throw it away because you may, you may what if it or use it, pack it up, put it away for three months. If, if after three months you don't use it, you could just take that packed box and donate it to a place that had prom dresses for little girls who can't afford it. A place who have, work items for women who need it, but they can't, a lot, with the COVID going on, a lot of people lost their jobs. There may be places, once we get to some, back to some kind of life, people may need these items in order to go on job interviews or in order to do different things. So you don't have to just throw it all away at once, but pack the stuff away. If you find that you're not using it, then just take that box. Don't unpack it. Just take it and give it away. But if you find some things that you can get rid of immediately, go ahead and get rid of those as well. Yeah. Mr. Roberts, Derek? For me, it's the addiction, the whole process of acquiring things. I'm not necessarily... Um, I really... It, it's the process, the, the buying it the anticipation of it coming, the opening the packets, going to the post office, going to the, the um, Amazon locker. So that that's me. For example, I have no, I, I literally got rid of all my clothes. I, I got rid of all my um, photography frames because I, I'm never going to frame a picture again. So I don't have a problem letting go. But to me, the addictive part, is um, acquiring things, the pro- going through the entire process of acquisition. Now, one thing I will say, and you, you know this, so I'll share this with Kayla. One thing that did help me this weekend, I wanted a computer and I wanted it for uh, some things I've been working on, data science things. This time, for the, probably the first time in my life, I got what I wanted. As a matter of fact, I went above and beyond what I wanted. Now, that prompted me to organize this room, at least to categorize everything. So for me to declutter, I have to put stuff in the categories, right? This hobby, this hobby. We're going to talk about that. So hold on to that category situation. We're going to talk about that later. So hold on to that. I don't Mm want to jump into that. But we're going to talk about that. So go ahead. It's just it's an addiction. No, No more or less addictive than someone that was on drugs. I have an addiction to... Uh, purchasing things, and it doesn't have to be expensive things. It, in in what I tell myself, well, I need to know. I need to know about this item or that item. I need to experience it. But right over there, there are eight. And in, in one of my my um, <laughs> addictions, you, I, I like cast iron for whatever reason. But the point is, do you need five hundred pieces of cast iron? Do you really? So then, need then my question to you is, and what I really want you to think about, why? So we. I really want to just focus on this one topic right here. What if you get rid of it? You have 500 pieces. You have a lot of raspberry pies. You have a lot of computers. You have, you're holding on to these things. What if you were to get rid of them? Think about that. What are you holding on to them for? Like we talked about, why do you need more than one K 
cast iron um, Dutch oven. And you fill a void. There's a void. There's and the a question void is, what there is the somewhere. Void? Yeah, what's the void? What's, and if, what? what's the void? And what if you get rid of it? So the first thing we're talking about is what if you need it later? So what are you holding on to that? And I want you to be very specific with yourself. What may you be holding on to that you think you could possibly use later? So you're going to hold on to it. Mentally. Mentally. Physically. If, if you, you know, on a mental level, if you said I had a hundred students right now that needed those by, it, it's just that when I get rid of stuff, I want it to go to someone who can use it. So if, 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 and this is just the way my mind works. If I could find, for example, I took a tremendous amount of uh, computer equipment, Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, to my daughter's old school. Box it up here. So for me, it's. It, it, there's a void, but I'm, I'm, you know, doing through doing this, this, and like I said, when I work with you at doing the week to get exactly what I wanted, right? Instead of buying a cheap computer and then saying, well, Dad, this doesn't suit my needs. I said, you know, and that was a chain of events. Again, I, I did organize this from my bedroom. I organized it. So it, it for me, it's about get what you know and a knowing what you want, and then b and then bank. What's the guy banks on the minimalist Ronald, on YouTube? Ronald. Another thing I learned this week is putting systems in place, right, to prevent me from doing things. But go ahead. Okay, so I don't want to delve too far off of our first topic. So we're going to come to some of the things that you're talking mm -hmm. about. But I want to I wanted to specifically talk about this topic because I don't want us to jump around. I want us to fit into one topic right now. Yes, sir. So like on AA, I'm Derek Roberts and I'm addicted to shopping. So you get to, <laughs> that's one of the things. Yeah, to say. Okay, so but okay, well, so to stop well, that, do you think that you could possibly get rid of some of the things that you hold hold on to in case you may need it later? Absolutely, I have. If if I, if somebody for and I'll give you an example of, of maybe ten years ago, a friend of mine came into my cube when I was in diet, and she said, "You know, Christmas time." She said, "You've been talking about doing this. I'm going to sit here." And, and tell you what you need to do. And my cube has never gone back to that state. So if someone came in here, right, like the coach or whatever said, do A, B, and I, I, it would be done. It would I be done. I to do that. Yeah, but, but you would be disruptive. You would be dis very disruptive, and I would be emotionally damaged if you did it. And I don't want to damage myself like that. But if, for example, if you said, if you said I have, students who need computers they're gone but see but there yeah. are students that need computers there but, but are but why, why did you have to wait for somebody specifically to come in and tell you because i'm the type of person that needs to work with somebody if, if this group said okay if you like i'm just being honest right if you said right now we're going to start the a group to help kids with eyes it's done it's they're gone i don't need them and and really to be honest with you the high is over i got high on that stuff I'm looking for my next high. It's like a okay. drug addict looking chasing. You don't chase your old high. You want new, new, new drugs, right? You're not okay. gonna say, "Man, I want that high from 1972." No, I want to get high now. Okay. Go ahead. All right. I'm just being honest. Okay. So that's the first one. Okay, you taking notes? Yes. Okay. I wrote notes. You see that? Wow, Tiff. I try to be prepared for y'all. I just don't want to get on here and. Okay, so let's talk about number two of why we may hold on to things. Can I ask Dan, one more thing? Sure, absolutely. The triggering event for me is a sale. If I'm thinking I'm good at getting a good deal, or if I can find it, I don't give a damn whether I need. Like right now, there are two grills downstairs, and I have two that are open that are unopened because they were on sale. It was a tremendous sale, and they're cast down. I can't leave this in here, and I'm just telling you the way my mind works now. The hell, we'll find a home for them later. But the point is, I, this is such a good deal. I, I can't do but that. Hum, but would would that have been a deal if you had not bought them? You already had to. So was it a deal for you to get two more that are just sitting? Or were you wasting your no, money? No, we we're talking more. about addictive behavior. No, absolutely. It makes no, the stuff I do makes no sense. That's why I'm on this call. Okay. Okay. Like, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not defending it at all. That's okay. over. The reason I'm not going to get you on here with you two every week and defend nonsense is nonsensical. It makes no sense. And like I said, the last time, literally, that I, that grill right there, that I used that grill was 
that might not be. It was either when the power went out seven years ago or at a rowing event, and my daughter's 22 when she was in high school, okay? okay. That's the, and, and then the other one, I don't even know where that other one is. And then the, but the thing is, there is, it's, a, it's, it's an addiction. I'm not going to sit here. Because if I get on here and defend the nonsense, right, what, what's the point? What are you gaining out of it? Absolutely. Okay. So let's move on to the second point. The fantasy self syndrome. So I think of the fantasy self syndrome of the per the person that I think I can be instead of the person that I already am. So we hold on. Oftentimes we hold on to things of the person that I think I can be. And for example, I will talk about my keyboard. I refuse to let my keyboard go because in my fantasy self. I'm going to be this great pianist. I can dabble. I dabble a little bit. I do. But I don't play it often enough that it needs to take up that real, reality in my house. So I have this fantasy self of me sitting down playing or the fantasy that I have that I one day sit down and teach Caleb how to play. Caleb's not interested in the piano. Caleb likes his clarinet, but I, we hold on to things because we have this fantasy of who we think we should be and not really who we are. And if we would let go of our fantasy self, we can let go of things that we hold on to, to be the person that we fantasize about being and not being the purpose that the person who we really are. So what you have to think about what is your fantasy self and versus who is your true self do either one of you have a fantasy self of who you think you should be versus who you are and do you hold on to those things because this is something that you can use in the better version of yourself when you're perfectly yourself now ladies first i do but go ahead that's not why I hold on to things, but that's sometimes why I get things. Okay. Like, I'll buy some suits because I'm like, oh, when I, well, I still wear my suits when I teach usually, but I usually don't. I only wear it when I teach, not when well, I When go you do your presentations, you may wear yeah. your suits. So, like, I do that for, like. Um, hold on one second, Kay. I want to brag a little bit, Derek. My, uh, Kayla's going to be a doctor soon. She's, she's working on her PhD. Yeah, and that's wonderful. And, and that, that's, I, I commend you for that. That's wonderful. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. And so, yeah, I'll get suits and stuff for like the person. Cousin! Hi. What? Did you say hey? Hi. Hey. That's Caleb, Mr. Dad. Hello, Mr. Caleb. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. You good. Dry today. <laughs> All right, so we have. I have a problem. What problem? My, my YouTube is not working. Your YouTube is not working. Okay. Um, give me one. Just one second. I'll be okay. right there. Okay. <laughs> just one second. Um, so Kayla, I'm going to put this to you. So you, that's the reason why you buy any things. I saw when you were cleaning out that you posted a picture of all of the suits that you had left mm -hmm. and it was maybe five to six to how many ever it was if you're only presenting every so often and you say you don't wear them really to teach or you don't really wear them huh i do wear them to teach that's usually when i only wear my suits okay and how often do you teach it just depends on the semester like it was two times a week last semester okay okay so i'm just putting it out there and this is the way i think about it like when i hold on let me fix this youtube okay. do y'all work together Derek? yes we used to and i i told the story at her birthday but what happened i was moved uh to her apartment so i'm I work at a place where we do our own stuff. So I'm putting my computer together, and this woman right there comes up to me. What are you doing doing my job? 
I'm like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> she said, this is my job. You don't need to. And, and so aggressive. She's been terribly abusive ever since. But, but I, I will say this. On a, on a uh, level, an emotional level, she, that's if, if I have turmoil, emotional turmoil, I'll call her and then she'll, so that's the, the that, and, and, and we're good friends, but the, the thing is, I say what I have to say, she'll give me the truth and then I'll move on with, mm-hmm. with the, and I, I so that that's how we met. She, she just walked up to me and said, you're doing my job, how dare you? I'm like, okay, but that's, that's, that's how that's done. But I have I ever ahead. not done my job to the best of my no, ability. No, no. Over. It, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't even. The, you're the only person I let talk to me that way. <laughs> and she'll tell people. I don't talk to people like this. Only him. And they're like, you talking to him like that? And I, whatever. Whatever. It's I like, do put that out there. If we're around other people, I say, excuse the way that I'm talking to him. That's not the way that I usually relate to. Him. <laughs> yeah. But I will say this. One time I had a problem on the Saturday. I don't know what, what, what it was. And she was on her way to the mall. And she stopped by the job to fix my problem. So ever since then, it's like, okay, I know this person to look out for me. So as a result, I don't And it mind. goes vice versa. Because yeah, one day yeah, I was that's... having my car fixed. And I refused to call an Uber. And I was going to walk the eight miles home. And I get this well, phone. What the hell are you doing? And he's like, I'm going to come and pick you up. No, you were in the process of walking. I was walking. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Tiffany. Look, that was before yeah. I was into Uber, and I was afraid. I, I just don't I – didn't, I didn't trust it. So, and you know I'm all about doing things for myself. As much as helpful as I am to other people, I don't like to rely on a lot of people because oftentimes well, they don't trait. come through. Huh? That's, that's a good trait. Definitely a good trait. I don't – definitely. Never be disappointed, will you? No. So let's get back to this fantasy self, though. Let's not forget. So my fantasy self, when I first started at Social Security over 15 years ago, is I wanted this job where I was going to be super professional, wear these suits and these pants and all this stuff like that. So I get in there, and that's what I buy. That's what I wear. Totally different from what the culture is in that environment. So my fantasy self was holding on to all of these suits and dresses and all these things of that nature when at the time I was just a person that was getting on the ground and fixing machines and stuff like that. So I had to let go of the fantasy of the person that I wanted to be in my work position and become the person who I truly was because did I want to risk getting down on the ground and messing up my suit or splitting it open or people looking up my dress or all kinds of stuff like that just so I could live that fantasy. So I had to kind of let that go a little bit. So we do hold on to these fantasies of ourselves. And I think sometimes we need to break up with the fantasy person and be the authentic, true person that we are. Jack, what are your thoughts about that? I agree. I agree. And um, I agree. As I look around here, most of the, the items are um, fantasy items, the things that you'll never get around. There's just not enough time in the day. Um, and it's about, and I'll share this with you, um, the way that you crush that, the fantasy. What? Okay, so I go hiking with this guy, young guy, he's 20, right? Mm-hmm. So we had the perception, oh, man, it's racist as hell out here on the trails, right? The fantasy, or, 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 or we even I even made a, a little recording about it, right? My little podcast. So we develop a system. Either every person we encounter, they get a one, three, or five, right? Mm-hmm. If if you if you avoid us, it's a one. If you speak, it's a, a, a three and a five. If you're you know, hey, if we dialogue, right? So based on that, right, the fantasy that we had was crushed. Most people are very cordial; they're very nice. It's just that we allowed the few passes to cloud our judgment, but the reality of the situation after we collected a little bit of information, and he, he goes, he, you know, he goes with his friends and he uses the same system. So if you measure something, right, and you go to the QS site, quantify stuff, just, just measure it. And we all, you know, 
if you're getting your PhD, it's basically probably about data. So we all are computer literate and so forth. And so, so just conduct a little experiment and it'll crush. It'll either confirm your fantasy or crush it. So that's, that's what I did. So over the next week, I want you to think about what items you may be holding on to because they fit into the fantasy of who you think you should be and not be and not the person who you really are. What about the person that you are growing to be? I'm still growing. I like to be ready so that I don't got to get ready. Where do we draw the line between manifesting the life that we want and also being like, okay, this ain't even about to be you, so get rid of it. So that falls back into the holding on to what if. Mm -hmm. That falls back into the what if thing. What if I become this person, I'm going to need these things. But are you that person now? And then when you become that person, are you really going to use the things that you were holding on to? Or are you going to get new things that will better fit you as the person you are then in the future and not the person who you were in the past when you bought those things for what could possibly be in the future? But the thing is, I feel we don't even have to do that anymore, right? She's getting her PhD. You have your master's degree. All you have to do is set up. You could get some dots, right? If anything, put a green dot on whatever. If that stuff is still there in X amount of months, I'm not using it. it it's no, you can set up all sorts of little experiments. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the, uh, let me look around here. So um, I, here's I'm just, always what I would recommend. You're good with the dots. And like, let's say we're talking about clothing or stuff like that. Take your clothes and turn them backwards in your closet. As you wear something, turn it around to show that you want it. That way, within a three or six month period, you can see what you are using. And then you can determine if you're holding on to that stuff for the possibility that you may need it later. And I will say this, in our lives, when I say our, I mean the three of us. We are very fortunate. We're not struggling. Right. We have jobs. We have the ability to buy what we need. Kay, looking at your background, you have the ability to have all of those shoes. We are not struggling. But there are so many people out there who are. And can the things that we hold on to help somebody who is struggling? Help somebody? Because I'm going to be truthfully honest with you, Kay, and Derek, and, and about myself. I'm a... Our looks aren't really classic. Well, mine is now because I've gone gone to the world, the classic wardrobe, the capsule wardrobe. But Kay, you're a very stylish person. You are trendy and it looks great on you. So a lot of that stuff that you may be holding on to is trendy. So let's say you have that black and white striped pantsuit that just looks great and you could use whatever. Is that really going to be your trend? three years later when you become the doctor and fantasy self person that you are striving to be. Is that really going to be the trend? Is people really going to be wearing the blah, 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 blah? Or are you going to go out and purchase something that fits with the person who you are now and to move forward? That makes good sense. Okay. So number three, and this is a big one too. Feeling guilty or obligated to keep items because it was a gift. Do we have that problem? No. No? Two items. Okay, I, have, I like that, huh? I, I have two two items, maybe three items that I'm going to keep. My grandfather's flag, my grandmother's glasses, and her coins. So that's good. So if every that's not a, if yeah, that's not every, a problem, that's great. No. No. That's not, but a lot of people, I will say this, a lot of people don't realize gifts are given with the intention of expressing your love for somebody. Once I give you that gift and you receive that gift, you've expressed your, you've accepted my intention. What you do with that gift mm -hmm. is, is your business. Because I shouldn't come back to you and say, Kay, you remember 10 years ago when I gave you that bracelet for your graduation? Where is that bracelet? In order to really show that you love me, you should still be wearing that bracelet. No, it's not about that. I gave you that bracelet to show my love, and I showed my love. 
if you decide to put that bracelet and melt it so you can get some gold, then what? I definitely should melt the bracelet. <laughs> I, I'll say this. I'll say this. If I do give you something, right, I do attach an expectation that you take care of it until you get rid of it. For example, if I give you one of these cast iron skillets or whatever, I don't, I probably wouldn't give you anything else if you didn't take care of what I gave you, if you even gave it away. But go ahead. But it's is that fair? Is that fair to put it your is. expectations on somebody else? Then, How is that fair? Don't, don't, if, for example, if you call me up, hey, and people have come over and gone shopping, right? They want to find, you need a, um, uh, you need pots and pans for your kitchen, go ahead. But take care of this stuff. That's all I'm saying. Just just take care of and, and and I might be wrong, but I'm just saying and I expect you to take care of But is um, that a gift given or you given because somebody asked for it? Because you asked. Um, but uh, Okay, so it, so it, let's it, say it, that So let's say that. So but what if you just truly give somebody a gift because you want to express your yeah, appreciation that's for that person yeah, what that's... they do with that gift is something different even when you're giving somebody like let's say they come over to get a piece of cast iron even right. if you're giving it to them why would you put that stip that on yourself or on them that they have to treat it right once it's out of your possession you have no control over what anybody can do with it are you going to go to that kitchen and say let me see that cast on yeah and i'll take yes yeah i'll take it back i will take it back if you (laughs) if 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 you if i'm just being you want to know you got to tell the truth no i'm just saying listen to me listen to me and and listen every profession has tools right that's that's just like if if you give someone a computer because they say hey tiffany i'm interested in it you call me up right and the expectation is in everyone on this call you want the person to use the tool to their benefit if you gave someone a camera i'm just being honest i don't want to see a camera in a million pieces because you didn't take care of it and that i could be wrong i could be right but if she's into shoes if she if she say for example she went to a um had a fashion show for homeless people, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, she was the coordinator and she showed them, you know, they're trying to get themselves together how to dress for success, right? The expectation is that you, and we, I'm digressing, but yes, I would expect you to take care. And because when we get rid of things, clearly we're ha- holding on to the things for a reason. I mean, this might be an underlying cause, but we want it as if the stuff has feelings. But anyway. But- so, but I want you to focus this more on you, and we're talking so a lot of these things we're talking about ourselves so i don't want you to focus on if you give something to somebody else and the expectation that you have that they treat it right that's not what i want you to focus on i want to focus on with this topic is the fact that somebody's gave, giving something to you and you may be holding on to it because of an obligation that you feel because it was given to you that's no. what that's so if no. that's not a problem for both of us, then that's good. I mean, for all of us, then that's no. good. That's one no. of the things that you have conquered and you really don't have to worry about it. So I'll move on. Number four, the fourth reason why we may hold on to things is feeling like we wasted a lot of money because we spent so much money for this item. And I like for you to think of a couple things. So let's say I... Let's say I have four cameras and I've spent a couple thousand dollars on these cameras. I'm really not using them. They're sitting in the closet. I haven't touched them in five years, but I don't want to get rid of it because I spent a couple thousand dollars on that camera. I really want you to think about it as some things. The money is already spent. I'm not going to get that money back. So holding on to this item isn't going to give me the money back. Um, but can the item be used to help somebody else? Like, let's say you have photography students, you have students in a class, you have somebody who really wants to, I don't know, somebody who really wants to be a dancer or something like that. And you have all of this stuff that you may have spent an enormous amount of money on, but it's really not benefiting, benefiting you. So we want to think about, you can't get the money back. Holding on to it is not going to get the money back, but can not holding on to it be helpful to somebody else yes my son came over here for a decluttering session and he knew some artists 
The dark room is gone. I'm never going to pour chemicals, get them to the right temperature, take some. Uh, and the person looked at us like we were crazy when we dropped it off. He was like, why are you giving this stuff away? Because it, it no longer serves me a purpose. I'd rather for it to be put to, you know, you dipping some uh, for talk. And, and, and that goes back to your fantasy self thing. Yeah, man, I, I love black and white. I love it. I like the experience. But I also can click a couple buttons and send it and get a, a as good a quality picture. So the fantasy, the reality is, do, do I need to kill myself with what is it, silver crystals and tunes and yeah, you know. just so that you can have something that you can do on the computer for two and, minutes. And I had some 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 um, blankets and stuff. We driving around downtown feeding the homeless broke my heart. Man, get ready to sleep on the ground, thirty two, maybe ten degrees outside. So here you take because yes, to your point. It would serve him better than me. I don't. I don't need that. There, there were twenty calculators in there because I took them to my daughter's school. Some little kid who might fail the SAT because they didn't have a calculator here. So to your point, yes, absolutely. And 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 one thing that I'm going to task you two with is to help me get rid of this 100 raspberry pies. They must go. And that's. Since we we're gonna act, this this group is about action. Yes. Yeah, a hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Probably right there. Wait a minute, <laughs> Kay. Do you know what a raspberry pie is? No, I thought it was like a pie. No, no a no, raspberry pie is a small computer. It's a small. Oh, I was like, it's, it was like you know, it's, it's, it's a microcomputer that. Oh. Okay, okay. Somebody, some kid somewhere needs them, and we're going to get rid of them. So that's this group is going to help me. Um, because no, and I, I'll share this with you. The rationale they only five dollars, and mm -hmm. now I'm getting over on Microsoft. Every time I go there, I'm going to get one, and then you get that mentality. Next thing so you know, in your mind, you've spent five hundred dollars for these. For no, it wasn't that. It's about me getting over on them because the they money's told me. already spent. But no, I'm gonna tell you why. Because they told me I can only have one. You can only get one at a time. So we have a lot of things that we need to unpack with you. So yeah. you just hold on to no, it. I'm just, just, no, listen. Just the first topic that call, we're dealing with. I'm going to be honest. If someone take y'all taking an hour out your day a week to help me, voila. Just I, know exactly. I love voila. it. I love the honesty. Loving the transparency is so inspiring. Like I said, what about you, I'm gonna cut you off for a second, Dad. Right, out of my AKA nail yet, because I never wear it, and you know you gotta, you're supposed to give that away to somebody else. And when it, it's crazy though, because when it comes time for like somebody else to cross over, I don't be trying to give away my stuff, <laughs> especially not your good stuff. <laughs> Here, you can take this T-shirt. Here, you can do it. Don't I don't even wear it, so I can definitely, and I got a whole drawer full. And just think about how special it would be mm -hmm. for to get something from one of their big sisters. Yeah. How special would that be to them and to you? All it's doing is sitting in the drawer. Right. Is a. I don't even remember the last time I wore a t-shirt that said "AK" okay, on it. So that twenty-three years it. in, I will say that. I only wore my Z five B T shirt when I went to homecoming. Like I don't even wear it to homecoming. <laughs> I just I be trying to give the people a look, not Alpha Cap Alpha. And then when we was talking about when you was talking about um stuff that you spent money on, I immediately looked to my left and see my wig stand, and I'm like. But I told myself that I would not have more wigs than I have heads, and. I, I'm about to be at that point, so I'm like, something is going to have to go, but I just feel like... So let's think about it this way. Can you donate those wigs to a cancer center for somebody mm -hmm. who's lost their hair because they had cancer? Right. Can you donate those wigs to somebody who can't afford to get their hair done, but they want to go on a job interview or something like that. And with your talent, you always have the capability to create more. Mm -hmm. We talked about you learning how to make the, what are they called? The ones that's like with the invisible, what were we talking about? The, huh? With the frontal? Yeah, but we talked about it, the, the new ones that you make. The kind of ones like, that's not like 
I, I can't think of the name of it, but you have the ability to make more. And if you were to need more, you can always go and do that. But somebody who doesn't have the ability could probably benefit from one of them 85 wigs you got hanging on the side because the thing is so heavy and it falls over because what you got the text. I'm not, I'm not, we're all in honesty. I know, I know, I'm kidding. And you know how much I love you. I wouldn't dare attack you. We just being honest about the situation. Even like the earrings that I have, I don't wear those earrings. I got this thing for literal. I gotta get my life. Because all of this can go. We need okay. to talk about the process of getting rid of the stuff. Like, okay. this thing, that's my next, that's my next thing. The same thing that I'm struggling with. That's my next thing. Okay. okay. So. That brings us into number five of why we may hold on to things. Feeling overwhelmed because you have too much stuff and too many decisions to make. You were just talking about that. You, you, we have, we're overwhelmed. You have all these wigs. You have all these earrings. You have all these dresses. You have all these shoes. Jack, you have all these raspberry pies. You all have all these cast iron things. You have that's all of these. Pie. That's a raspberry pie. Yes, you have all of these things. So and when you get ready to the clutter, your mind is all jumbled because you're like, where do I start? I have so much to do. How do and our next topic will be how to get started. We'll go more deeply into that. But um, with this, we're feeling overwhelmed because you have so much to do. I want to say it's a journey, not a race. There is no race to the finish line. There is no point that you have to be within six months, all of this has to be gone. Within three months, all of this has to be gone. You don't have to declutter everything at once. It's not a race. Life is a journey, not a destination. I take that from India Ivory. I don't know if somebody else may say, but it's, the, it's a journey. So you don't have to get there within two to three weeks. Just take your time, and what I remember, what I um, recommend is breaking your space down into sections. Start with one section and work that section. So let's say you break down clothes, shoes, jewelry, wigs, whatever, books, raspberry pies, um, cast up kitchen, whatever. Just start with one section and work that section. That section may take a week, it may take a month, it may take. Three, three months, but you're working towards progress of having what you need and giving what you don't need or don't use away to somebody who could use it. Thoughts? I'm, I'm going to say this. And you might disagree, right? The, you help, you, okay, I want to, okay, I have a goal, right? Mm -hmm. I want to get rid of 100 raspberry pies. Got a PhD student and a person. What do you want me to do? Because, see, I like to be told what to do. But see, tell that, me how to. That's no, no, you I, can't. We can't tell you absolutely, how absolutely. to do it. It's a it's support group. No, no, no. I'm willing to get rid of them. I'm, the two of you tell me where can they go. And they're but gone. See, that's put it. That's not putting the onus on you. That's putting Ooh, the onus. I'm willing to let it go. No, 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 no. This is your, but that's. Your, I've been telling you all of this all the time. This is your personal thing that you. Have it to is. Do. You have to determine where you want that stuff to go. It's not up to me to say, "Hey, Derek, drop well, you that have off any at ideas? this school." Do you have any ideas? Do you know we talked about this. We talked okay, about talking you. about talking to a school to see if they need it. We talked about talking to a community center to see if they need it. I, we and we've talked about what could be done with the different things. You have to take the steps to do it because if you don't do it, that doesn't stop you from just buying another one hundred rands. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm not going to do it. But what but what I'm saying is, you have to take the onus on you. For Can yourself. we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? All right, I'm going to set a personal goal, and I want you all to hold me accountable. So write this down. By the end of this month, right, they need to be gone. So how I do it is up to me. So by the end of it, what's the last meeting at this month? The 
the 28th. All right, so by the 28th, 100, they need to be gone. Okay, now how I do it, I'll figure it out. But the point is they need to be, if you have any ideas, feel free to share them, though. Feel free to share the ideas with them. They must go. So that be, that way I'm doing something. I they, they must go. Okay. They must go. Okay. So, here So, I'll, I'll work it out, but they got to go. Okay. And if I do need one for a project, guess what? I can go to Micro Center and buy one for that project. But me, they have to go. There's a rule within, it's a rule within minimalism, but it could possibly work in with the clutter. Don't hold on to any things that's less than $20 that you can get within 20 minutes. So those rags by pods are $5. It takes you less than 20 minutes to drive to Micro Center. Don't hold on to something that you can just replace in under $20 within less than 20 minutes. I agree. But they have to go. I have to set a goal. They must okay. go by the 28th. All right. All right. So let's let's move on. Um, number six, struggling to let go of sentimental ob- Wait, objects. Wait, what's five? Five, feeling overwhelmed because you have too much stuff and too many decisions. Oh, I didn't write that as a point. I just wrote it down. Okay. That's, a, that's your fifth Let point. me write that as five. Okay. Okay. All right, number six, struggling to let go of sentimental items. So I always tell Pete, I always say, this is something that you should do last. If you set up sections to work on, handle your sentimental items last. And it's different because people don't know how to separate the item from the memory. Now, I'm not telling you, Jack, you said you have the three things that you want to hold on to for your grand, your grandfather, your grandmother, whatever. Three things is nothing. Three things is not clutter. Mm-hmm. Three things is not going to overwhelm your space and make you just be out of control. That's not a problem. But then you have certain people who hold on to every little thing, like people who may hold on to all of their grandmother's china when they eat off a of paper plates. You, they, you understand what I'm saying? Or people who may hold on to... Kayla gave me a ring every year since I've known her. So let me hold on to all 27 of these rings because people hold on to the memories instead of the objects. So I'll get you in one second, Derek. So you want to think, would those memories disappear if you didn't have those objects? Memories are in our hearts and live within us. Objects are are just objects. You can detach from the object and still have the memory. So some things that I do with sentimental things like cards I may have gotten, this, that, I take pictures of them because now we have this cloud that we can back things up in many different places. If I need to have that memory of the note that my best friend wrote me in high school, and this is a true thing I just got rid of, I can always go back to the picture and still hold on to that same memory instead of holding that physical item within my hand. Thoughts? And it's not to say that you get rid of all of every sentimental item that you have. That's not what I'm saying. But if it becomes an issue where it's causing clutter, can you let go of that item and still hold on to the memory? Yeah, certainly. Lucky for me. I was just saying, lucky for me, I don't have many sentimental items. I think these little chests about get as sentimental as it's gonna get. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Well let's 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 explore that. Let's write that down. We are entitled to a chest and that's it. If it doesn't fit in the chest, it got it has to go. And I'm I can implement that. Can we write that down, Miss Watts? I don't know if that's fair to say, because what if the item is too big to fit in the chest? It's an option. What no, no, what I'm saying is to confine it to a space. A lot of because this is really about space. It's about what you're going to do with your minimalism is really about purposing, have a purpose built space. For example, if you get to the point where you can't do what you want to do because your items occupy your space, you have a problem, right? We're not talking about minimalism though. We're just talking about declutter. No, e- even declutter. If you if your 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 space is so decluttered and you say I want to lift weights or whatever and you can't do that you have a problem but 
So if, if we stay confined into a space, I like that idea. It's an option. Just say, I give myself, well, like people have treasure chests, right? Mm-hmm. And that, that's a good idea to, to say, like she said, put her stuff, things that will fit, obviously, if it's larger. But it, it, and, I, and I took your idea. Downstairs are all my plaques from SSA, right? Mm-hmm. right? And I took the plastic off of them. And guess what they're scheduled to do? They're scheduled to be burned the next time I go camping. For, because we do, you know, campfires. And then I have a thing of wood and stuff down there, a bin of wood and all that stuff. And when I, the next time I go camping after this pandemic, I'm going to burn them. And I did scan them, but guess what? That means absolutely nothing. Because some person in 19 or 2010 handed, what does that mean? It means nothing. And I'm going to tell you another thing. But I'm then I wouldn't to, consider that a really a sentimental item to, item to you. I, I don't have the picture. Those I can look at it. As I can look at it. You, I, and you have, have the picture. Yeah. Right. So but I'm going, go ahead. I want to transition from stuff to experiences. Right? Stuff to experiences. To, to, Absolutely. To because good, good and I would say myself. I would so, say like around okay. Christmas time, I had my cousin ask me, Well, what can I get you? What can I get you? I said, Don't buy me anything. She said, But you've been so good to me. I said, Treat me to an experience because I would rather have that experience with you. Because I can be truthful, tell you, any stuff that you bring in here. I probably won't keep it. And I'll say this, like my Kayla buys me t-shirts. Every t-shirt she buys me, I throw another t-shirt out so that I can maintain the items that she gives me. So I would rather, and she buys the best t-shirts. And I'm a little bit set because my mood 24 seven is starting to come off. But anyway, I would rather, those items mean more to me than just a regular t-shirt or whatever. So I'm not going to hold on to stuff, but if I have an experience of us in my memory, it weighs so much more than a necklace you could have gave me or some nail polish or whatever. So I like the thing, not things, but experiences. Yeah, that's so nice. I listened to this group called The Minimalist and they say, love people, use things. Okay. Love the get the experience from be, from people. Use the things and get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Good. I'm not there. Uh, take some time to get there. What should I do, y'all? What should I do with this? What is it? That's some paraphernalia stuff she got. That's my on my gifts. So, I mean, like, what what is it? Let me what is. It's AKA paraphernalia that she got mm-hmm. gifts. And like my shoes from probate, my mask from probate. So let me ask you a question. Can you make a collage? No, that, it's not going to fit in a collage because they're actual items. So let me ask you a question. When did we cross? 2014. That's been six years. <laughs> when have you worn those shoes? And don't get me wrong, Kayla. I still have my book. Well, no, before I, before I minimalized, I still had the book that I used when I was online. I still physically held, had that book up until last year. So I get it. But what I did was I scanned that book. I still have the memories. And I actually shredded it because I didn't want anybody to get that information. But then I shredded it. Would you, do you physically feel that you need to touch those shoes? Do you physically feel that you need to touch that mask? None of that stuff over there. Right. So let's talk about maybe taking pictures of it to keep the memory, but then letting it go. You'll still be an AKA whether you have those shoes or not. I literally just got rid of my probate top the other day. I was like. But you'll still be an AKA without that probate top. The only Zeta thing that I've kept for 23 years is my jacket that they gave us. And that's one thing. But if you're not using it and it's just sitting there and it's clutter, and unfortunately, babe, it looks like clutter. It did not look like that when we did that room. It didn't look like that when we did that room. I done moved some stuff over there because I was moving other stuff. So just think about, like I said, taking pictures of that stuff and maybe getting rid of it. Take pictures of it, pack it in a box. So we're we're moving in July, right? Take pictures of it, pack it in a box. 
if you find that in within the amount of time, give yourself some time. Give it three months, give it two months, give it three weeks. I mean, you haven't touched it in six years. What's two more weeks? So let me ask, can you fit the shoes? She's yeah, not gonna wear them. She's I not gonna think wear them wrong, but I'm not wearing them. I think it would be a good idea if like somebody like her took a picture of you in the shoes. And if they mean that much to put the picture have, on your wall. I have pictures of her in the shoes. Then I would I, just an idea, put that picture on the wall of you in those shoes or put it in a prominent place. No, and then like she said, you know. Uh, I don't think I need it. Then just put it in the box and do like I said. If, if, if you're holding on to it for some centimeter reason, keep it in the box for a little while. If you feel like you don't miss it, let it go. Let it go. It's not going to make you any less of that ace that you were on the line. It's not going to make you any less of that AKA that you are. It's just stuff. And obviously, it's bothering you because you wouldn't have mentioned it if it wasn't bothering you. I literally just looked over there like, I forgot all about it. Yes, sir. Add bikes to that list. And That's what? one thing at a time, Derek. No, they got to go too. One thing at a time. Get rid of those raspberry pies because I'll, now I'm going to be, you know, we're all about transparency. I always tell you, you have a good idea in your head, but oftentimes you don't follow through completely. Once you know what you want to do, you're like, bam, I got it. And because I know how to do it, is done but it's not done until it's done so let's start with one thing but at a time let me say one this thing at a time but let me say this so if i don't do that by the 28th the prospect exists that i would have to hear your mouth afterwards so it'll get done it'll be <laughs> <laughs> it'll get done trust me okay so that, let's that's a hard the prospect but go ahead, go ahead i only want you to start one thing at a time so by the 28th your job is to get rid of those raspberry pies mm -hmm. come the 28th you are rid of those raspberry pies then we will move on to your bicycles okay all right so my last point my last point and this we talked about this a little bit number seven not knowing what to do with the items that you no longer use. Oftentimes people hold on to items because you don't know what to do with them. And that's like with UK with all of that junk on the table. I'm not, I don't, I don't mean to call you paraphernalia junk, but all of that junk on the table, your suits, dark, all your raspberry pies, all of this stuff. Um, so like I will say a couple of days ago, no, I won't say a couple of days. We, we, we talked about this like last week, week before I scanned like 2000 pictures. And I had been holding on to those pictures for quite a long time because I didn't know what to do with them. So once I determined what to do with them, I scanned them, made sure I had all of the pictures and then I tossed them. So once you know what you can do with those items, it's easier to get rid of them. And you always have plenty of options. Yes, sir. How did they make you feel? What, get, scanning the pictures and get rid of it? No. When you actually threw that, the, you didn't oh, I feel felt, away? I felt like a weight was lifted off of me because I pride myself in being... You didn't oh. say, okay, suppose this, the, 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 the data goes, I need a physical... Oh. No, I I'm didn't. scared for you because I know that if I don't because I have my stuff backed up in many different places so I know it's on my computer I know I have it backed up to Amazon photos I know I have it backed up to Google photos I know I have it in all of these different places that if I need to get to it then I'll be able to get to it but if I was to lose them was I really going through those 2,000 pictures every day anyway so you just detach from stuff I just detach it does have nothing to do with that memory in my heart. Stuff is just stuck. Um, okay, I'm not there yet, like she said. I'm, and I like I keep telling y'all, you can't. It took me a while to get where I am. I didn't just start here, and it, it's a process. It takes building up to this process. You're not going to be there within one week, two weeks, maybe one year or two years. But to me. Stuff is just stuff. 
Like I give away a lot of big stuff. I have no problem giving away big stuff. And people be like, I can't believe you're giving that away. Or do you really mean it? How could you just, it's just stuff. I don't put any value on these material things that I have. They're just- but I'll say this, I think I hit it. A lot of it is just the fear of missing out. Like I would need this. Like, it's like, really it's all fear based. The reason all this shit is, excuse me, all this stuff is around here, it's a fear. It's fear. It's like, oh, what if I need that and I don't have it? That would be a horrible thing. But damn, a hundred thousand times, you know, you like, or oh, what if somebody called me and I had that item and they could have used it? But you, like I said, but you, you, and you found that. Just look at my birthday party. I went to light my cake and I couldn't even find a stupid lighter because I had thrown it all away. I could have gotten upset about it, but what did I do? Blew out the cake with my You could have lit the candle on the stove. On. You could have lit it on the stove. Right. So it's the, I mean, you, and like I went to make some toast or something and I didn't have a toaster because I had gotten rid of it. But you know up. what? I made the toast in a pan and it was right. just as good. Remember, okay, I made the toast in a pan and it was just as good. And then when I got to the store, I bought me a little $10 toaster because I found some zero carb bread. But it's, you got to... It's fear. You gotta, missing out on what if you can? It, if, but it's fear. Every all this mess is fear based. It's fear. Mm -hmm. so um, those are my seven topics that we have to. Oh, I, I'm not finished. So we have plenty of options of getting rid of stuff. You can donate to centers to be helpful to there somebody. You must be. Go I ahead. always say try not to donate. And this is bad for me to say, but whatever. I always say try not to donate to a Goodwill or a Salvation Army because all they're going to do is sell your stuff. And then they'll take a little bit of the money and donate it to help other people. I would try to find some place that's going to readily use the stuff and give it to people so it can be more beneficial. Um, you, you, sometimes you can sell larger items. Like I had my elliptical that I wasn't using. I sold it. Um, you can gift items to people. It, like if you say, if you know somebody who needs cast iron pans or stuff like that, gift that gift it to them. But Derek, try to realize once you gift it to them, it's up to them how they handle it. Don't gift some, them, somebody something and then put a stipulation on the, how they use that gift. That's not fair. Let me go. Let me go over there. And my cast iron is rusty. We got a problem. <laughs> got a damn problem. <laughs> And then if you find that you can't gift, you can't sell, you can't donate, figure out a way to recycle the stuff in a, in a, in a way that you can get rid of it. So. Did we, we need to add a topic of not doing it in the first, stopping the damn behavior. So we could talk, put that on the list. We haven't gotten there week. yet. We haven't gotten there yet. We have to, now I, I, I put out this um, statement in the beginning. I'm not a psychiatrist. I can't tell you. You may not be one, but the man. I don't give a Best psychiatrist known to man. Your mind. Your mind. Anyway. So we'll we'll talk about things of stopping the behavior. We'll talk about fear of missing out. I just it's just that our first topic was why do we hold on to things? So what I want you to do is take these seven topics seven items that I've given you, think about them over the week and think about how many may pertain to you and how you can possibly make some mind changes to do some things differently. I think I'm going to write a page on each one, just write about each one. I'll do that. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's all I have. And but we got anything else? Thanks, Tiff. Can you take a picture of the list and send it to me? I will type up the list and um, send it to you. But I will say that can this say is this? not a... Can I can we... Can, I, I'll do it. But, I mean, I want to... I'll, I'll, I'll give I'll give the space like a drive, a Google Drive. Okay. Like, so we can put articles and stuff. You know what I mean? Or information. We can. We can. I also I also recorded this um, session in case you want to go back and look at it. So I That's think. Good, good. Can I, I ask a question? I have a question. So when you do that, I know they give you a limited amount of space, but can you download that? So I was thinking about hosting it myself. 
No, what I'm saying is like the recording of this. Can we, like I have a Zoom account too, but what I'm saying is can you take this recording and download it and put it like on the driver? No, so I have to convert the recording and then upload it to some place where I can store it. Zoom is going you to do that. You record it on your machine. It's recorded onto my computer. Okay, when gotcha. you record you Zoom, it records gotcha, down gotcha, to gotcha, your computer. Gotcha, and so gotcha. what I could do is something like privately upload it to YouTube and then send out the link. So that you so let me ask my question a different way. Did you do the recording yourself with some other software, or are you making the recording through Zoom? And I'm, making then, a, I'm making the recording through Zoom. And that'll go on your private computer. Your, your, so your, Zoom has two options. You can record I, it onto your computer, and you can, or you can record it into the cloud. I, okay, that's what I want to know. Okay, all right. So um, I'll make up a page, a, a website. It'll give me something to do during the week, and the website will be. I don't even this. I don't even know. Okay, what I call it? This isn't a podcast. What I call it? No. What do you call your sessions that you have? What are they called? I'm so, I do a seminar, a workshop, workshop or seminar. Workshop. It could be a workshop. Okay, that's what it's called. This is my thing. We have some very smart people on this call, and this is something we should be able to solve relatively, not easily, but it should be able to be solved. There's this has nothing smart. to do with being smart, babe. It has everything to do. With. I'm giving you a compliment. Take it. But all right. <laughs> it has nothing to do with being smart. This has you could have the smartest person and. Just think about some people like Albert, Albert Einstein, all these brilliant geniuses who have all this clutter all over the place. They're smart, but they still have all this clutter. It has more, more to do with the mentality of why we do things. Okay? Got you. All righty. So I'll work on that. Y'all work on your seven topics. I will type them up with the kind of points that I made within the message, and I will email that to y'all. Or more better than that, I will put it on a website. And give you act and have you access the website. So you you're going to take care of the space. You, which I'm is gonna take care of the space. I got you. You have unlimited space. I don't have unlimited space, but I have a lot of space, so I'll take care. This is virtually compared to me with my two gigs. Because I can always just upload this to YouTube and make it private, and and because I have a YouTube Premium account, it's not a problem. Okay. Let okay. All righty. Thank you, everyone. I All right, appreciate you. you joining right. this week, and I will see you next week. All right. Take care.